What is up, everybody? Back with another Most Listen To Bands of the Month video. If you haven't seen these yet, uh, basically, it's just like my monthly recap, what I've been listening to the most. And the way I do it is I go through Spotify because that is what I listen to music the most uh, through. It's the most convenient for me when I'm at work or driving around or whatever. So that's what I play the most music on is Spotify. As you can see, though, I collect a lot of stuff. I do my collection videos with CDs, cassettes, vinyl, but... Uh, for this, if you have Spotify and you want to do it, you just go to the stats feature and you can do your last four weeks, last six months, and so on. And it shows you a big list, like you can do a top 10, top 20. It goes down to like 25 or maybe even 50. But my top 10 most listened to bands of the month over, uh, you know, April of this year. Starting off is Inquisition at number 10. You know, this band has been up near the top in the top 10 for most of these that I've been doing over the last two years or so. I love these guys. They're my favorite black metal band. Love their sound. Very unique. It's just two dudes in the group, Dagon and Incubus. Uh, Dagon does guitar and vocals. Super unique voice. Great riff machine. Uh, he's one of my favorite guitar players, as, as I talked about in a recent video, but he's got great tone, great riffs, very unique and uh, awesome, great player. And uh, Incubus on the drums is just an absolute machine back there. They got a lot of cool albums invoking the majestic throne of Satan, uh, Satan, magnificent glorification of Lucifer, ominous doctrines are like my main go-tos, but whole discography is absolutely solid. Uh, number nine, Ford Ressi, which is another black metal band. Uh, these guys, the French Canadian from Quebec, they've got one of the best freaking black metal albums of all time. Hard to pronounce, but Themis pour la rebellion, something like that. But this album is just absolutely majestic, and the riffs are amazing. The melodies are just encapsulating and majestic and perfect. And uh, if you like, uh, you know, melodic black metal, you need to listen to this album right away because it's pretty much perfect. Uh, they got some other cool stuff, but that album I always go to. Absolutely fantastic. Came out in 2016. But uh, another band here, number eight, black metal again. Surprise, but second to Sun. Russian black metal band. They've got a couple of really cool albums, or a lot of really cool albums, but a few I go to, Nocturnal Philosophy and Leviathan. Nocturnal Philosophy, the song North Metal Legion specifically, is just absolutely amazing. Uh, very brutal, but melodic at the same time. Great uh, tone on all the instruments. The riffs are great. The melodies just absolutely uh, mesmerizing and awesome. Great blast beat drumming, which is awesome too. Uh, number seven, I got Necrophobic, another uh, black metal, kind of mixed black and death metal here, but they're from Sweden. Saw these guys last year at Maryland Death Fest. Amazing experience. They're one of my favorite bands ever. Got a lot of cool albums, but uh, uh, Hrimthursum, hard for me to pronounce, but like 2006 album is fantastic. That's all from 2009 is uh, one of my favorite albums ever. Celebration of the Goat, open that up. One of my favorite opening tracks ever. So great album. If you like classic, melodic, uh, black and death metal, if you're a fan of Dissection, you don't know Necrophobic, I'm sure you already know him, but check him out. Number six, Marty Friedman, his solo stuff. I just saw Marty over in uh, Tennessee last month, and it was freaking amazing. Um, Marty, fantastic guitar player. He was in Megadeth, obviously, everybody knows, in the 90s. He's on my favorite albums of all time. Freaking Rust in Peace. He's a great player. Saw him play... Uh, the Tornado of Soul solo and a lot of his uh, solo material that uh, he does at his concerts. But some of the albums I was going back to listen to with his solo discography, you got Dragon's Kiss from 1988, his first solo album. Uh, a couple other kind of standouts for me, Loudspeaker, Inferno, and Wall of Sound. He's got a lot of great stuff. Um, if you're one of those people that thinks Marty just went soft and, you know, didn't really play metal after he left Megadeth, that's just extremely false. He's got a lot of cool metal stuff that you can check out. Specifically Inferno, I'd probably say is one of my like top two albums by him. Just amazing stuff. Um, number five, Holy Moses. Great, great band. Classic German thrash. They're my favorite band from Germany. Uh, Sabina Klassen, front woman of the band. The only constant member through and through. Um, she's still with them today, obviously. The uh, album they just put out, Invisible Queen, is fantastic. Extremely technical brutal great production uh very fantastic stuff this is their farewell tour so i assume this will be uh they're on their farewell tour right now so i assume this will be their last album it's a great one to go out on they got a lot of great classic stuff um, the new machine of Liechtenstein from 1989 absolute thrash classic technical masterpiece great guitar playing on that from andy Klassen. um then you know they got more brutal on some of the stuff like world chaos it's kind of a mix of technical stuff and more brutal stuff and then they got more brutal with terminal terror in 91 Reborn Dogs in 92, kind of bordering Death Thrash, some very aggressive 
uh, growls and just guttural vocals from Sabina, which is very cool. They got a lot of cool stuff um, in the 2000s as well. Agony of Death, a really cool album from 2008. It's got a really cool technical kind of apocalyptic feel to it, which uh, is really cool. But that new album, as I said, great, great stuff. Might see it on my end of the year list. Number four, another black metal band here. They're called Aura, if I'm pronouncing that right. A-A-R-A. -A -A. They're from Switzerland. This band's an absolute machine. They have only been together since like 2018. They've already put out five albums, including one this year. Triad 3, which is, um, you know, the third album in a little series of albums they're releasing with that name. And this uh, it's kind of a unique style. It's a blend of just like very aggressive, serene it's like really aggressive at times, very serene and melodic at times, and it's got kind of a DSBM uh, vocal style on it, which some people don't really, you know, love. I'm not a huge fan of that, like, specific subgenre of black metal, but this kind of blends other stuff together, which I think is really cool. But uh, very high, screechy, like, haunting vocals on this. Uh, really cool couple of albums they've got. They've got five of them, but this new one from this year, uh, I'm really liking. I've listened to it, like, six seven times already in the last month or whatever since i've heard it so dig it quite a bit and uh really cool band aura number four number three i got held militia another black metal band we're listening to a lot of black metal this month uh most months but hell militia they are from france and i only know know about this band really because uh i was just kind of following along with this festival metal threat just seeing what was going on with it. I didn't go, but um, I saw that a bunch of bands canceled, uh, like Gehenna canceled, uh, a couple other bands canceled. Hell Militia was one of the replacement bands, and I thought they had a kind of cool name, and I wanted to check them out. I saw they were black metal from France, which is usually pretty cool. They got some really good albums. I think four total. They've been around since 2001, but uh, Jacob's Ladder, Hollow Void, a couple of really cool albums um, that have come out. This is their last two albums, so 2012 and uh, 2022, so gaps between the albums but uh, both really cool uh if you like you know horna stuff like that you'll probably dig this number two i got anthem great great classic japanese band they're my favorite band from japan uh they've got a shitload of great albums their newest one crimson and jet black fantastic uh possibly my favorite album i've heard so far this year just amazing amazing guitar work from akio shimizu their guitar player they've had since 1992 on domestic booty this guy's a shred machine uh Hiroya fukuda their original guitar player on the first handful of albums is an amazing player as well those albums are great with him uh looking at a couple of their albums though you know they've got a lot of great ones i've got like 20 albums bound to break uh, no smoke without fire domestic booty as i said eternal warrior immortal and uh black empire along with a new one are a couple of my favorites but uh great great band and uh yeah, I hope to see them live one day. Unfortunately, I've never seen them live. And my number one for this month is actually Metallica, largely because I was listening to their new album several times, trying to, you know, get a feel for it so I could review it, which I did. Um, I thought it was all right. You know, I gave it a 6.5 out of 10. It's not bad, but uh, it's not amazing. But there is some good moments on it, and I think Metallica kind of gets overhated on at this point. Let's be honest here. Like, obviously, they're not putting out Kill 'Em All and Ride the Lightning anymore. They're 60 years old. They're putting out decent material, so it's whatever, and, you know, they're touring right now. Their set lists are pretty pretty, de uh, pretty decent. They're doing, like, two nights um, at each city, I think, a completely different set list. Play stuff from all the eras and whatever, but, uh, of course, obviously, Kill 'Em All, Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, and Injustice for all the best albums for me. Uh, but that newest one is uh, not, not too bad. But, uh, yeah, Metallica was the number one of the month because... Listened to that new album a lot, and I went back through a couple of the classics, of course, uh, once I started listening to that new album. But real quick, my number 11 through 15 that just missed the top 10, I got Exciter at number 11. Love those guys. Great Canadian, classic, speed, thrash metal, whatever you want to call them. But I uh, saw them, you know, a month or two back at Hell's Heroes. Great, great show. Uh, Dan Bueller, really cool uh, singer they've got. Love his high screams he does on the uh, early albums. Very great, unique voice. Uh, Evil Invaders, number 12, cool band. They're a modern band with kind of a classic sound that I'd recommend to check out if you like 80s metal. Uh, Gravestone at number 13, which is uh, a classic band, pretty uh, somewhat obscure, I'd say. They've got a couple of really good albums there from the mid-80s. They did have a couple in the early 80s, which aren't quite as good, but a couple albums there in the mid-80s are very, very awesome. Uh, Judas Priest, number 14, just going back through some of their stuff. Obviously, they're one of the best metal bands ever. And number 15, Warlock. Uh, great classic band, Dora Pesh on vocals, and uh, each of their four albums are fantastic. 
But uh, yeah, that's what I've been listening to uh, over the last month or so. I did get a CD haul recently from uh, this place near me called CD Warehouse. So I was listening to Live uh, Live Meltdown from 1998, the Tim Ripper era of Judas Priest and Jugulator, because I got both those CDs uh, at the store the other day. Both amazing. Uh, that live performance is one of the best recordings of Priest, uh, I would probably say. So if you haven't heard it, go check it out. And let me know in the comments what you've been listening to lately. Give me uh, your top 10 most listened to bands if you can do that. I always like to see it. But uh, as usual, you guys, till next time, thank you for watching.